Uh, hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Night Fox 15. This is Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links, and welcome to week three of Team Wars with Defusion versus X Factor. I'm solo for now. Uh, Shows might pop in later. Uh, we'll see. Little drama in the llama camp. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. He's got stuff. Uh, but we're already playing, folks. We are already playing. Rex Cruz on the bottom, and Macrum X is on the top. I gotta fix that. Sidereans wrong. Let's see. Uh, that's correct, and now it's you, and swap it, swap, and some of the deck stuff. All right, we got uh, Gaia on the bottom, kicking things off with a punch. Didn't want to start slow; they wanted to start fast. See if they could pick up some steam, like a charging, galloping horse prince on a dragon. Uh, the repeats are off, so I gotta, uh, I'm gonna update those. Uh, let's go... Team Wars. Close it out. There we go. And everything else looks good, folks. Alright, so hopefully we should be in for a pretty solid match here. Obviously, Defusion and X-Factor. Uh, I don't know if you have a clear favorite. Not gonna lie. Not gonna lie. Both teams doing pretty good. Obviously, X Factor is one and one, so automatically. Oh my God! They brought Phantom Knights. What? What? Oh, I just cogged with this deck, so I know exactly how it works. Let's go. Your graveyard is basically a second hand, folks. That's how. You... And he's got a prismatic cloak. What? Macrum. Insane. Uh, repeats are off too. I'll fix that too. I uh, can't believe they brought Phantom Knights. I mean, we saw Hazy's yesterday, so I'm not surprised we're seeing uh, about a, a, a new experimentation as far as the meta goes. Uh, why not? Push the envelope. Somebody says it's doo-doo, and then you think it's good, and it turns out to be good. Why not? Why not? Siderian never fixes the dang repeats. Repeat, fixed, and here we go. Fixed. No you repeat. Scores are zero. Both players on their first deck. And yeah, folks. We got ourselves... Uh, Gaia Pop right off the bat here. Boots, though, is going to banish himself from the graveyard. Allowing him to search for a spell or trap card that is a Phantom Knight. So they only run traps. So he's going to get the Foggy Blade. Set that and... Another set, big pass. Triple set, big pass. All right, but Gaia with zero attack here is going to be struggling. No other back row for him. Rex Cruz here. Rex Cruz here with one in the hand. He does still, still have his field spell, so if he wants to, he can search, and he will. He's going to look for something good. What is it? Okay, so that's decently usually a good sign. Cosmic Cyclone off the top says no. No, you're not searching today. No, get out of here. Uh-uh. The fact that he revealed that also tells me he might not have anything else here. I, I think we're going to see a switch to defense and a pass with a possible set from Rex Cruz. After he uses his Force Knight, though, he's going to go ahead and utilize his ability. Tribute him off. Is he going to? Let's find out. If he tributes him off, he's allowed to search and add a card to his hand. He's going to set. Is he going to use that other ability? Can you do it in the same turn, though? Oh, that's a good question. I usually don't, I'm not sure. Uh, no, he's just going to go for this. You can only use each effect of Soldier Guy of the Force Knight once per turn. So he could have. Uh, but he chooses not to, knowing the Phantom Blade was set. Because if he tribute, well, he actually could have still gotten a search. He'd rather have a 26 beater on the field with a handicap than a 23 beater on the field with a handicap. Either way, it, ooh, I was going to say, if he draws any combo pieces that he needs, which is really just a, does he have it in the grave? Yeah, he just needed another gloves. If he ripped, ripped gloves, he can go into three and his attack would be 3k. He knew the Phantom Blade was set. He was hoping he wouldn't have OTK next turn. And he's going to utilize the effect this turn to grab a... Black Luster Soldier. Because he top decked the Magical Knight. Aww. Feels bad. Markham's probably going to get a big rip here unless one of those sets is something good. Treacherous Trap Hole is something you would see in a Phantom Knight deck, but a trap card's already in the graveyard. 
So he's not going to be able to use it. We're going to see a book here on the wagon. That'll actually... I was going to say he has two a light and a dark already. He's going to say that might cut his ability to summon the Envoy, but it won't. He can banish if he chooses to, but he'd be silly if he did. Not coaching. It's just, you know, makes sense. Don't banish. There he goes. He's going to go for a swing here. Obviously, this is lethal depending on that back row. Blackluster Soldier can attack. And it's an enemy controller. All right. Let's go. Maybe. Phantom Knights. Rip. Not dead. Sort of, kind of. Uh, he's not super dead, though, so... All right, so he actually wasn't super dead. I, didn't, I don't want to say anything, but now that's his turn, I will. So Phantom Blade, actually, Fog Blade actually has an additional effect in the graveyard. If he uh, had another Phantom Knight in the graveyard, he could have summoned it, and he didn't. I thought he did, but uh, apparently I wasn't paying that hard attention. Ooh, another Cosmic. Oh, that's a big rip. Big rip, and he's just going to pass, hoping for a DC. Uh, not how you want to see Phantom Knights go out. They come in, make absolutely no splash, and then just leave. Markham, uh, props for trying, but uh, not going to be good enough to beat Gaia here. Rex Cruz is going to take the dub, putting Defusion 1-0. Full disclosure, slight Rex Cruz bias. I'm not sure why. I just really like the player. It's pretty chill. Poor Phantom Knights. Yeah, I know. Yeah, uh, I mean, if I had a fantasy team, I'd probably always just put Rex on it. I don't know why. Just, just, I don't know. Dude, I watched him last season pretty, uh, pretty regularly, and the dude impressed me. So, yeah, he's one to watch for this season for sure. He's already proven himself earlier, I think, week one. He got six or seven in a row. It's pretty solid. I have to go look now. Nah, it's too much work. Well, chat, good morning. Some of you might realize that there is an obvious lack there of a certain individual by the name of uh, Shows. I know. Uh, are we having a drama llama baby? No, no drama llama baby. He had some stuff going on. He had some stuff going on. He said he couldn't, uh, if at all he could be here this weekend, would be on a Sunday. And uh, I don't know. Maybe we'll see him later today. Maybe not. We'll see. Might join in later. Hi, Rain. All right. What is his second deck? Not Rex. Rex ain't on the second deck. I'm gonna flip these guys. I'm gonna flip the player. No, I'm not. I'm not gonna flip the players because I can't. All right, Markham um, on the top on a second deck. Why is it making Rex Cruz do a second deck twice now? Well, that's weird. Bottom left. Uh oh, guys, we're crashing. We're crashing. Coming. Come on. I think Siderian just crashed. Uh oh. Alright, I fixed it. I did it through OBS. And Rex is gonna open stupidly here with his Gaia. Double set and a pass. And I don't I don't think this was a repeat. He wasn't on he's not repeating Phantoms, is he? Alright, I don't see a repeat. Ooh, a shiny Rowlet. Oh, I like it. Wano, uh, Jono, uh, I always say your name wrong. Uh, love the shiny Rowlet. Big props. Cosmic Cyclone off the top here. He's not even going to wait. Picking off the field spell. Not even bothering with a back row just in case he can play through it. Uh, 20 cards makes me think this might be the mirror. Triple set. Rip. Uh, no prediction? I could try and do a prediction. Let's see. MST, uh, unless you already missed it. I do have the powers of the mod. And another MST. This could be Buster Blader. That's a good point. Let's see. Prediction. Did I do that right? No. Prediction. That's the one. Uh, start prediction. 
Uh, which team will win the match? X or DF? Or XF. Both have squigglies in their name, except they're not the same squiggly. Give you guys five minutes. You know what? Screw it. We'll give you guys... Oh, I can only pick five or ten. Yeah, five minutes is plenty. You guys can pick. Start it! I think I did that right. Swinging in, it was a Canadia uh, that we saw here. Two MSTs in the grave. So in the end phase, he picked off a Canadia, and it is actually Buster Blader. So props for Sajiru and uh, Han Sanders. Hey, Sanders. 100% Buster. Everybody was on the Buster train, except me. I was on the mirror train. And that's a whelp off the top. Is not... Did he use his skill? He did. Draw sense low level. That's the point of Cosmic Cyclone. Why not? As soon as I saw that Cosmic Cyclone, honestly, I should have known it was Buster Blader. That's a dead giveaway. Oh, what? Uh, predictions are up, guys. Vote, vote, vote. Uh, he's just going to be facing a lowly guy, but guy can pop. <laughs> so he's not really that lowly. The field spell is gone, though. Ooh, nice. Adds the karma of the destruction swordsman to the hand for those of you that don't know what it does. Basically, you can target three cards in your opponent's graveyard, banish them. And then if you do, gain attack. 500 to a buster on the field. Cap Ooh, <laughs> let's go. What was the point? What was the point of your pop, Mr. Gaia? What was the point? There was no point. This is lethal. 41 to the face. Straight on a tank position guy with zero attack because he got Yancey with his poppies. Uh, I mean, probably went to end the main phase and he probably retained it. That's what I would have done. So Markham's going to get revenge here. Rex Cruz's guy is going to take a big rip. Oh, shit. They're already in the next game. That was fast. All right, folks. We are tied. Defusion and X-Factor. DFXF. One and one. Rex Cruz is going to be on, looks like Melodious on the bottom, and Markham on the Bladers of Buster. Buster Blader, best deck. Hazy Flames, maybe. We saw it last night in the whole Drama Llama. No, I'm kidding. In the, uh, in the, uh, uh chick Bricks and Potatoes match. What was it? Five, five players brought Hazy Flame or something like that? Five plays of Hazy Flame? Five, five matches? I forget what it was. It's in the card, scorecard. But well, that was probably one to watch. Oh, he's going to open his Osteon Auto and right go into the Bloom Diva, the Melodious Choir. And he chose to dump a Mozerta and a Soprano. Does he have another monster? Does not. All right, we're bottom left now. Going. Hazy was lit, pun intended. Cosmic, again, draw sense low level going to be... He's running Necro Fusion. All right, Rex Cruz has the Fusion of Necros. Some some been running it, some have not, uh, or just haven't drawn it and haven't played it. It's, you can't, it's hard to tell. We don't have their full... I don't get that to their deck list. Mods would know. MST... Well, technically, I guess I'm a mod, but that's on Twitch. doesn't count. MST to the chain link to pop the other back row. And it's another Necro Fusion, speaking of. Look at that. He's running two. It was dead, but hey. Oh, that's actually going to be huge here because his graveyard, uh, Macram's graveyard, is basically another hand, just like Phantomites. Funny enough, he's playing two decks that you kind of utilize their decks or their graveyard as hands. Was Victor Lee with Hazy's? Not sure. Turbo Man, it went like one of four though, sadly. <laughs> yeah, it was fun to watch, not so much effective. It didn't I love this map by the way. This is from the event. From the uh, you voted on it, you get it, Matt. Alright, swinging double set. We know Kanadia is an option. There it is. One Kanadia. Maestro's gonna chain. Uh, trying to utilize, I guess, maybe dump his trap in case he's running Tretch. Because there's really... You're going to flip her up next turn, you get another Banish sort of kind of thingy. Uh, so I guess you just burn it to burn it. Yeah, in fact, he is going to Banish 
The Necro's here setting up for a possible treacherous trap hole. If he runs it, maybe he's just doing some mind games. Doesn't bother to get rid of any of his cards, so just dumps the one. Draw sense low level. Took another 1k to the face. He gets it two times uh, per duel, once per turn. They can use draw level. Where are the hazy flames? They're still sleeping, King Krabby. What's up, by the way? How you been? Drownings, yeah. I don't think he'll... Uh, Markham will be on... Well, we're not drowning, but he's gonna... We're gonna see that whelp. Obviously, he low-leveled it. Why not? Yeah, whelp, and which card is he gonna add? And he goes for the karma again. Because he already has the destruction sword. Dumps the karma. He just needed fodder. Here's Johnny. It's just uh, Buster Blader, but we call him Johnny. Why not? It's destruction swordman version, not the OG version. Looks way cooler than the OG version. Book of Money. He's going to say no. Uh, he could have done a synchro play there if he so choose to. He's got to deal with the choir. So the best way to do that is to make your dragon synchro. And then with the ability of your trap card, in, uh, I'm not coaching, I'm teaching you how the deck works. Ability of the trap card with both materials already in the graveyard. You fusion summon, but uh, you gotta be able to play through that back row. Sadly, the synchro is easily interrupted by a book, so rip. So right now he's not going to be able to get the dragon on the field unless he can protect both of these monsters. And with a choir and a maestro on the field, he's not doing so. And it won't matter because maestro is probably going to capitalize and dump. Get rid of all three of these. Kanadi is going to target the Maestra in the swing. And say goodbye to your Buster cards plus your Kanadi. Misplay for Buster, says Saijiru. I mean... Did he have anything else? Like, where's the misplay? Because... The back row is still there. The play was there. What's the misplay? Unless I missed it. Haha. <laughs> miss, miss. Kind of got interrupted. I wouldn't call it a misplay if you get interrupted. You gotta search the Buster wh Blader with Whelp to out the Shiberto? Um. Hmm. I guess that's an option. And that, in fact, is going to be a treacherous trap hole targeting himself and the blader of Busters. Kanadi is going to summon on the field here to try and keep him alive with only 1,200 life points. He's used his skill twice already or once. I wasn't paying attention. Draw since low level one time. Double checking just once. He has another activation. He should. He's taking 2k damage. Well, 18, 28, whatever. Uh, that's another Maestro, though, that can banish. So by him keep flipping the Maestro down, the Maestro just continuously gets banishes. So now he can banish the materials in the grave, which would be used if the trap card was in the grave as well. So it's not looking good for Buster Blader here. It's pretty much rip. Big ol' rip. This is death to the face. Well, that's a drowning. You're kind of hosed. You need a big ol' drowning, and that is not what he has. Markham's gonna fall to Rex Cruz's Melodiouses. Melodious size? Melodious disease. Alright, that's going to bring Defusion in the lead again. So far, so good. Markham's going to get bullied off the table here uh, by a bunch of singing note ladies. And X Factor gets to decide who they're going to bring up against Melodious. What do you counter Melodious with? That's what they're pondering right now. Oh, they've already been pondering it because that match was kind of pretty one sided. All right, so Sajiro's teaching us, uh, don't talk about regular. Wait, huh? All right, I should go back further. Uh, misplay for Buster. We have to search the Buster Blader and Whelp to out Shiberta. He can't search regular Buster. Don't talk about regular. The Master. Discord them with memory. Then Whelp summon it. Oh, discard with memory. Whelp summon it. So in the chain, summon it off the Shiberta. Otherwise, it's getting banished. Uh, Melodious Magnet Warrior's best counter. Guys, do you have any competition? And Ritual Beast. Woo. I don't know if we're going to see Ritual Beast. This is not 
Uh, oh, wow. They're, oh, Jaime and Jono both playing. Uh, best casting duo right there sitting on the roster. And best caster, Ohaimi God. Praise be to Ohaimi, fearless leader of all casters. So hopefully we'll get to see them play. Uh, Jono, Jono, I saw well, I casted Defusion Week One and Jono played. He didn't do so hot. He was he was in and out. Uh, Jaime, I don't think got to play. He wasn't even on Week One, so it's going to be interesting. Hopefully we get to see some Jaime action. Everybody knows his uh, lovely voice, but not some. Well, actually, I'm pretty sure everybody knows he plays too. It's pretty pretty regular. I was going to say some of you might not get to witness him play, but yeah, you probably do. Virtual Beast, best counter? Um, psh, okay, so you guys got your picks, but I'm going to say it's probably not Ritual Beast. I'm going to say that Ritual Beast is definitely not going to be a counter option. If I'm wrong, I'll eat a shoe, but I'm pretty sure I'm not wrong. And I'm pretty sure I can't digest a shoe. All right. Tsubasa? Tsubasa? I'm saying that wrong. I'm butchering it. Apologize. Oh, man. I'm eating my shoe. Holy crap. Oh, bro. Somebody had inside knowledge. That's not fair. All right. This was rigged. 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 I can't. I, you can't prove that. Nobody can prove that I said that. Uh, it doesn't hold up in court. That was my brother. He stole the mic from me. I don't have a brother. Uh... Oh, man. Dang it. <laughs> Clipped. No! <laughs> why did I... Oh, why are people playing this now? Oh, guys, I gotta eat a shoe now. What the heck? Did they hear that? And they're like, let's make Night Fox eat a shoe? It's Ohaimi. Oh, Ohaimi, you did that, didn't you? I know you, bud. I know you You totally want to see me eat a shoe. I didn't say it. I don't, you can't prove it. Uh... Yeah, you Destiny drew into your pick for the proper counter, but it looks like they might lose. Triple set, though, is pretty strong enough. With a Floodgate on... Well, that sucks. So, uh, Bloom's going to get flipped down. Uh, Ostionado will, will not be able to kill the Bloom Diva in the end phase because she's flipped face down. And, uh, yeah, that's going to not allow him to bring back these two lovely ladies. But he's going to summon a score here because he wants to keep pushing. Is he going to get flooded on the score? Kanadi on the score? That would be good. Yes, another floodgate on the score. Wasn't coaching. I'm just saying that kind of made sense. Uh, your normal summon would be then used to summon from the deck one of your other ladies or the graveyard, which could be this lady, in case you have the other one in your hand. Uh, but no, he's going to get flooded here, so that's no score to worry about. Double set with a cannon hawk being your intimidation target. So this is uh, MST in the end phase, man. Oh, man. Tsubusa looked like he was on the ropes, and now he himself is in control with a lowly Canahawk dictating the entire matchup. Nice coaching. <laughs> Sup, Swag man. Is it coaching when the play is obvious? I don't know if it counts as coaching. It's pretty, pretty sure it's an obvious play there to flip down the normal summon so you don't get a skill activation. That being said... Now he has to play in mind that the skill is still alive, right? So usually the skill gets burnt turn one or whatever their first turn is. Uh, and then you don't have to worry about it for the rest of the duel. But he still has a skill, so now you got to worry about that. He didn't know the play, Swag Ninus? That makes sense. Probably why you went 0-2. Kidding! Kidding! Kidding. You didn't go 0-2. Was it 2-2? I think you went 2-2, right? I'm kidding, bud. All, all hearts. All hearts. Uh, good thing you weren't here when I said I was going to eat my shoe. Oh, dang, you are here. You said Fox eating Tim's. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. Good point. Good point. It's a treach, baby. Clearing up his board. Not letting that Canahawk do stuff with one back row set. Choir is going to get adding to the hand here. And he's... Ooh. Ew. Why would you add that? Was that a misclick? That had to be a misclick. You can't summon her. Did he know his top deck? <laughs> what the hell? 
Oh, that might have been a misclick. I would have picked either the diva, or they're all divas, the score or the songstress. Why would you grab the Shiberta lady? She's thick and she does nothing in your hand. She helps with no handies. That's going to be a Book of Moon, flipping her down, not even going to get to use the skill. That's going to be a, uh, a thick, uh, whatchamacallit, lady in the hand. Forgot her name. Wenda, that's what it was. Wenda set. He's not getting any uh, double beasts or beast warrior or his wing beasts on the field. So he can't can't get a tamer and he can't get a beast on the field. Keeps getting cucked. All right, Rex Cruz, what's that lady doing in your hand? Is she helping you out a lot? I'm not saying it. You know, I'm not. Just saying. It's, it's a weird choice. What's good, Night Fox? Steven Freshy, what is up? It's 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 good. Could be better if I had my right hand man, but uh Tis I solo today. Win the best waifu for everyone. Monster reborn off the top. I was gonna say, look, it's prismatic, but they're all prismatic because they gave them to us prismatic. And he's gonna grab the Soprano. Are we gonna see a floodgate? Uh Kanadia, something? No. That special summon allows him to add to the hand. That's going to be a Songstress, baby. Finally, something worthwhile to the hand. Now he could try and skill here, facing down one back row. He could try and summon here, facing down one back row. He's got double Kanadi in the grave. No, double Flood in the grave. And he's going to finally pull it off. Songstress gets beaded. Shapina says, give me back my score, most likely. Yep. Score doesn't really help you too much uh, in this if Apelio's swinging at you, so it only helps if Apelio is not on the board. That could be a, an Apelio if she chooses to pop into a window and then a window into an Apelio. It'd be a weird choice, but hey. Wind is still... <laughs> yeah, dealing with Wind is not going to be easy. Flips for days. Winda's greater than, or Diva's greater than Winda. Ooh, he's just gonna pass. He's gonna let him, just let him soak in his, all he needs is a tamer. Ah, uh, <laughs> He's gonna get it, did you forget? I kind of forgot, not gonna lie. And it's Canahawk and Elder. Get pedal finning, no back row set. This ain't looking good. Not looking good, folks. He's popping off. Canahawk, get Canahawk and take two, send him to the grave, add one to the hand. Yes, yeah, is looking like a big rip. I'm thinking Canahawk plus the uh, Elder. No, nope, it's going to be Elder to the hand in the Pedalfin. All right, he's going for the Pedalfin. A bouncy bounce, most likely sending back. I'm not going to say it because you guys are going to say it's coaching. I'm just, I'm just going to say send in one back. Yeah, it's, it's pretty GG. Uh, if he wants to be successful, though, he's got to send two back. Or make sure he ends on an Apelio, so when he swings, you can't get... Uh, I'm coaching. At this point, I'm coaching. All right, I'll stop. I'll stop. <laughs> can I take it back? Search card. I don't have coffee this morning. <sighs> so I'm a yawn machine. Oh, my God. Send to how? Well, he can't because he used the fin, but he's had to get rid of two. That's what I'm saying. He's gonna find, gotta find a way to get rid of both if you want to swing freely, or summon yourself an ulti Apelio and swing freely either way. Why add Winda? Uh, to banish Winda, so you have double Windas. so you can uh, pop your own Winda, summon your own Winda, and then when he had to eat off the field, he can double Winda. If he so chooses to. That's his banish. That's his grave. It's looking like Rex Cruz might be big rip here, especially with the one back row. That's going to be the main factor here. If that back row is live and can interrupt, you might have him some troubles. Oh, that blows. Book of Moon. Get flipping down here. He's going to bait the back row here. Obviously, the score's in the hand. Trying to make the Apelio jump. Pelio's going to jump in the end phase. Doesn't want to swing into the window. So now you got two windows and a pedal fin. Pinky the dolphin. Two cannies in the grave. And we're making another ulti Apelio. We're just swinging. It's not worth 
anything else, really. Unless he has some way to stop a 16 to the face, which he does not. There's no point in BMing, and he's going to take the big old dub. So I'm going to be eating a shoe. How nice. Sabusa is going to take a dub with the Ritual Beast. Their job was finished. They had to deal with Melodious, and they did. Rex Cruz is going to go 2-2. Two and two. And we're tied again, folks. Just like that, we're tied. <laughs> Need a tissue. Nah, is that a happy tissue or a sad tissue? It's a, it's a, it's a nose-running tissue, so I'd say sad tissue. What flavor shoe? Air Forces, Jays, Tims. Uh, I got a slipper house shoe. Can I eat that? Seems like it'd be easy to digest. Oh. Wait, somebody's... Uh-oh. Counter Ritual Beast with Buster Blade or Trimids or Gaia. <laughs> Slipper works for you? All right. All right. Here, I'm eating it. <laughs> Get bases. Yeah, I know. It's... Oh, <sighs> well, out of... My... But yeah, mine of the plot of BA would, would beat Ritual Beasts. It's a scam. I know. It's. I mean, I'm hurting for it too, man. I'm hurting for it. Picked the Sunday game. He said he was available Sunday, and then he said it was a maybe on Sunday. So he's got some stuff going on. So it's just solo me. Feels bad, but hey, can't control uh, the schedules of other people. You can only try to do your best. To accommodate the time slots. So there we go. We're going to see Ohaimi. Ohaimi God. Praise be to Ohaimi, caster of all casters. Master of all masters and baiter of all baiters. Try mids? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I was wrong about Ritual Beast. So I'm not, honestly, I'm not going to start predicting anymore. That's not a good start. Uh, Tsubus is just straight double set pass. Drama Llama, Ryan. <laughs> I'm going to keep saying Drama Llama just because it's fun. Yeah, I got to go. I got to talk to uh, Xiao's other boo, I guess. He's, he's got a side girl now or a side guy. It's a, tech, it's, it's a, it's a dude. It's uh, ZDH Gaming, man. He's been... Uh, Shao's always always branched out, and you know I let him run around with other uh, other casters, but he always came back to me in the end. But uh, hopefully that's uh, you know that's still the case. <laughs> uh, man, I'm hungry. Let's go, Ohaimi. I know Ohaimi biases in chat. Let's go. Oh, did I click Wano's name? No, I clicked Ohaimi. It's Hoppers. He's going to use his new and revamped skill where he has to send back a card to add the hunting ground on summon. Gets rid of a wall of D. Let's go. Reveal. But that's terrible for Harpus being your only card. Double set. One in the hand. Wall of Brazil. Winda get winding. So his opener wasn't that bad. He's going to be big enough to swing over and Winda's going to get a pinky. Four follows. Pinky hitting the board. Normally you do window for window, but he's probably got follow-up in the hand or if he has a tamer in the hand. Yeah, the Harpy's brick, but I mean he's got two sets, so I wouldn't really call it much of a brick. His hand is still playable. It'd be more of a brick if he couldn't play it. He's going to get Pinky on the back row here, trying to bait some of it early. Sends it back to the hand, busting an Apelio out of his hand for it. So that means he had another beast in hand. Does he have a tamer? He does. Lara. And probably the best tamer he could have ripped. And that's going to summon the window. So now he has options here. If that's back row is something that can only interrupt one, won't matter. I mean, they can even if it's book, it's useless because they can do their thing while face down. They can contact fuse even if they're face down. So that book of moon's got to be timed correctly. Once he's finished all of his fuses, defuses, you got to use it. 
That's, I mean, not coaching. That's just how you play against Ritual Beast. Everybody knows that. Especially Ohimi. Gosh, if you think Ohimi didn't know that, then you, you don't know Ohimi. Should I text my wife and be like, yo, I'm hungry? She's kind of mad at me. I mean, not only am I fighting with Shouse, I'm fighting with my wife. I'm having a bad day. I'm not fighting with Shouse, actually. So we're going to get a Pinky and a Laura back on the board, sending the Ulti Apelio. Or, sorry, the regular Apelio. I mean, I guess it's either that or the Pinky, and you don't really want to lose the Pinky, but the Apelio can at least send the Pinky back into the Banish pile. He's just trying to clear the back row here. You thought Shouse was my wife? I mean, he's my Team Wars wife. We were talking about it yesterday. He's J-Lo and I'm Ben Affleck. And he said, and I quote, I saw J-Lo in real life. That booty is no lie. No team wants you for coaching. Just become a caster. You become a coach without realizing that you're a, you're a coach. And you catch yourself sometimes doing coaching stuff, like telling them how to play. And then wait, I should be saying that in case they don't see that play. <laughs> Book of Moon ain't going to do shit, but it is going to prevent him from sending back a card, which is probably going to be the Book of Moon anyway. Flipping him down doesn't really solve anything, except he can't banish another card now, so that's good. So Pinky in the... Did anybody catch when he searched? Yeah, right there. Sorry, Yonville. I didn't have coffee either. All right, let me see if my wife's going to be bestest, bestest wife ever. I'm going to be like, yo, may I please have a coffee, love? If... How do I word this? May I please have a coffee? Latte, please, please. If it's not too much trouble. E -e, that's how we say it. That's how it's, we say it. Kissy face. Let's go. As I, as you said, I need to play Gaia. If Gaia starts first, turn it game. Well, that, I mean, that's not quite the only reason. Harpies is pretty strong, too. There's an ulti of Pelio. Get swinging. He was most likely going to get rid of that Book of Moon with the Pedal Fin, and Ohami was just going to be hosed either way. So 17 life points left. Good thing is, though, Harpy Harpus is going to allow him to make some plays. No back row set from Tsubasa is going to mean that he can actually still make plays. Uh, he is going to have to pop his own hunting ground. Whoa, that came out of nowhere. Pop his own hunting ground, sadly. No, it does not. Yeah. Book doesn't do shit against Ritual Beast. Neither does Canadio. Neither does Floodgate. Yeah, flipping them down. Don't do shit. That's why they're so good. Well, I mean, uh, uh, what's the word? Objectively speaking, they're good. If he went roach, he had game. Couldn't do anything. He had one monster. How big is Pedalton? What level is he? Four? Does he run roach? Probably doesn't run roach. All right, get popping. Get adding. Egotist to the hand. Uh, perfumer, not prismatic. Rip. Spiders, are you new, greater than uh, new XYZs? Harpies have OTK. Okay. I'd like to see that. All right, so Monster Reborn off of... Uh, the top here? I think it was off the top. I don't think he had it. I missed it. Either way, we're looking uh, to try and push the Ulti Apelio float here. His options are a Pinky and a Lara with a window on the field. There's no OTK that I can see. Uh, you're either going to send the window or force the Apelio. Egotist. Get Egotist. I'm about to find out who's he sending. He's going to... Uh, try and break up the Apelio. Apelio's gonna break. Summon Pinky and I Alara. So his swings here are gonna be crucial. Uh, we already know he has a Winda in the hand because that's what he added. So he's facing down a double Winda potentially. He might need a third monster to deal with this board. He's not gonna have any way into a third monster. Pinky sends, gets sent to the grave. Most likely so will... 
Nobody else, because that's 2,000 defense on both parts. And you're not going to swing into a tamer when she can summon from the grave. Or from the deck. Or the extra deck. But you usually don't see the extra deck summons unless, like, you have nothing in the hand. You're going to prepare for your match. Starts in 20. Have fun, bud. Uh, Roach only stops level 5 or higher. XYZ is not uh, a level, pal. Yeah, you guys, I was confused by that, too. Yeah. It's not looking good, actually. Sabusa, even with the double back row set, might still be in control of this duel with Ritual Beast. They might go a, a Team Wars not going 1 and 2. They might actually pull off a 2-2, two -two, maybe even more. This is insane. Ohaimi didn't open very well, though, so that kind of big rip for Ohaimi. Uh, but, uh, yeah, this thing looking good. Canahawk's going to get Canahawk and... Does the Canahawk and the Winda, his Banished Pile is looking mighty thin. So he's going to have to make some plays here. He's already lost his Apelio. Adds the Ambush. That'll help. Ambush would be one way to replenish that Banished Pile. As long as they don't die, I guess. Gets rid of an Elder. Is he going to get another Search Off? Or is he going to get... Nope, he's just going just gonna to do his thing. Oh, yeah, he's out of searches because his banish power was at zero. Never mind. So he's going to be forced here. And Kanadia would be exactly when you need to use it on this ulti Apelio because he can't yeet right now. Both monsters have been special summoned already. So he kind of just is host. Harpy Lady is also going to chain to the Kanadia. Prismatic. Rip. And send back the Winda. So no float worries there, but double set. We know one is probably the Ambush. He's going to have to deal with that as well. Are we going to see? No, we are not going to see a Cosmic Science Clone from Mohaimi. Or sorry, a backer removal, which would probably be MST more than Cosmic Cyclone. Summoning a Perfumer. All right, he can make another uh, Synchro here for another Harpy or making a branch out into an XZ's play. What are his options? Floodgate set. Well, one's definitely ambush, so you got to play around that. So you can definitely grab a window in the ambush, and those are his other ambush targets. Most likely the Apelio, so he can replenish the banish pile. Goes for a harpy with a floodgate set. Good call, or just lucky guess. We did see two in the other match. Feather rest, get rest in, sending back three, drawing two. Lot of spells already been used. Get eaten. That's going to open the field here. He's going to have a pretty open board. Ambush, one set, no additional monsters. Already has normal summon, basically has only one attack. We know the other card's most likely ambush. Doubt he would have held it. Let's the swing go through. He has enough life points. Giving him D-Draw would be very helpful here. And Ambush will also only help. He is giving him D-Draw. <laughs> you guys got to forget, sometimes you're going to have to trigger the D-Draw sooner or later, right? If you With 11 cards left in the deck, he, his chance of top decking whatever he was going to D- He didn't even D-Draw. What the hell? Did he already give him D-Draw earlier? Uh, what? Did he forget? Uh-oh. He didn't do D-Draw. All right, cool. I was going to say, with 11 cards left in the deck, at a certain point in the duel, you decide it's like he's either going to top deck what he needs with only 11 cards left, or I can just trigger the D-Draw now and put some pressure on him. He's not even going to use it, so it didn't even matter. So Jaime paying off here on the 26th of the face. Harpy, get harping. We're going to send back the window so we don't have to worry about the float and flip down the pedal fin so we can't uh, worry about getting sent back to our hand. Well, Jaime's playing this really well. Double set here is going to allow him to fuse. You don't you don't want to play into something. If you normal summon, he has a chance to trigger one of his back row. If you set, uh, not much you can do. Book of Moon is going to come off here in the battle phase, and he does have valid targets. I do believe, yes, he does. No, he doesn't? I thought he had valid targets. Maybe I was wrong. Did I miss some stuff? 
He's going to choose not to eat. Huh. Was he out of targets? Pretty sure he only did it once. Oh, he can hawked. Yeah, I think he was out of valid targets. Okay, so he didn't do it once. Get killed. Apelio, down. Swinging in for lethal. Ambush says, what's up? That is a Winda and an Apelio, regular baby one. Apelio most likely going to be sending back the Canahawk. This is what the grave looks. A lot of traps. A lot of traps. We have Sphere Karibo, maybe? Yeah, they kind of do run it. He does have two ambush. Yeah, it's pretty standard now, I think, is double ambush. Was last week. Double ambush. Different team, different player, and still had double ambush. So I'm pretty sure it's standard. I am loving this mat and sleeves. I don't know why, uh, but I think it's just the gold color that gets me. Canahawk's going to add back the Elder. So we have an Elder Canahawk play, except I don't think he has a Canahawk in the hand. Maybe he does. Don't really need it. Your fuel is pretty much set. With eight cards left, you don't really have any valid targets left to banish. No additional normal summon on the Elder. Canahawk's going to get searching, so he does have something he wants. Matt's dope? Yeah, I know, right? This one's good, too. I like the Pendulum map, too. No Yu-Gi-Oh! logo on either one of these, so that's pretty good. Is this one of those ones from the store? I might get this one. This one looks good, too. But I don't like spending gems on cosmetics. Book of Moon, irrelevant, except it'll stop Petalfin from sending back his Harpy Lady to the hand. That's pretty much the only reason you would use that uh, early. And we're going to see Ulti Apelio and Elder's additional summon comes in now. He wanted to wait for at least one back row to be burnt, I guess. Before he committed to the additional normal summon, Forbidden Chalice in the battle phase is going to boost up Harpy Lady. And Harpy Lady is going to do her thing, sending back the Winda. In the damage step, he would be unaffected. Apelio is going to swing and take out a Chandler. This is a Floodgated Harpy. Summons OG Harpy. Gets swinging. Apelio gets bouncing. Oh, he had to do that. Unless he had Sphere Kribo in the hand, then a suicide wouldn't have been worth. He's going to take out the Elder. He's going to leave the Winda intact. No back row means he can't bounce the thickness back. And there's your Elder again. Additional summon still to follow. Could use it later if he chooses to. No really back row to play around, though. Wow, straight to the battle phase. He must have a bunch of traps in his hand. And he loses right to the face. Ritual Beast, Sabusa, taking out Ohaimi's first deck. Holy macaroonies. That was a very long duel. The man is 2 0 with Ritual Beast. Are we going to see her BP? Now they picked Harpies to go into Ritual Beast, so I wouldn't be surprised if they decided to repeat this. But then maybe they won't. Yeah, I caught that too, guys. Discord chat. Team chat. I caught that too. I was like, uh-oh. I didn't say anything, though. I ain't a rat. I ain't a rat! I mean, if I was a ref, I'd probably would have said something, but I ain't. There it is. We're going to see it. The Wee Pete has been used for defusion. Oh, Jaime has struck down, and he said, I want to repeat that. I definitely felt like I could have won. And my second deck is definitely Hazy Flames. Kidding, I don't know what a second deck is. But we won't ever know. We won't even get to find out. He did it again. Y'all need to stop doing that. Oh! 
I almost choked on my water. It's safe, yeah. I wouldn't call water a good counter against this either. I mean, they picked Ohaimi's uh, Harpies to play into Ritual Beast. So they know that their Ritual Beast can, at or their Harpy, Ohaimi's Harpies can at least have a fighting chance. Not only that, they chose to repeat this. So his second deck definitely would have been a worse matchup. And to be fair, water kind of not really been played. I mean, just, I think yesterday, I don't even think anybody played it. Oh, we had one person play it. Oh, no, we had a couple people play it. Oh, shit. I missed that match. <laughs> Hazy Flame match. Yep, I remember that one. All right, so, so far, Water was played yesterday once in one match by both teams once. And another match once by a team. So, yeah, it's kind of falling off. Whoa. 8 7 2 went on a tear, bro. BZ. That dude went 10 and 0. Holy sh. Or 10 and 1. How did I miss that? Tier Baguette match? Dang. Pope, buddy, you got some spinning to do. Sorry, I'm not I'm not talking about this match. Uh, yeah, buddy, we're gonna see Ohaimi not do so well again. Uh, ends on a rest and a Cyber Slash with no back row sets. Sabus is gonna have double back row and he's gonna suicide his ulti Apelio here. Most likely having an ambush in his hand or set on the field. Because why else would you kill yourself? Book of Moon is going to stop the Chandler. No Harpy. He's not going to be able to get any traction here, Ohaimi. So this repeat's not paying off so far. Monster Reborn! Because XF goaded. And an Egotist. No monsters, though, for the Cyber Slash to target. Except its own. If you wanted to, I guess you could send the Slash. Actually, I don't know if you can target the face down. Pretty sure you can. Swinging in. This is game. No delays that I felt. And I clearly wasn't paying that much attention. That's an ambush, like I said. Summoning both the Tamer and the Wind of Thick Booty. Gonna take out the Elder. And uh, straight pass. One card in the hand for Tabusa. This actually could be relatively good for Ohaimi, but with no back. Oh, rip. Top decked Elder, is that a Canahawk that he was just holding on to? Probably not. I doubt it's anything. Speaking of Canahawk, there's his ulti version. We're gonna get. S oh, we actually are gonna get searching. He has an additional normal summon here, so this would actually be. It wouldn't punish. He'd actually be okay. He'd be fine here. Lara in hand? I mean, honestly, he, he could add Laura right now, and that would be ideal. Uh, what? <laughs> no, he adds the Apelio. And summons the Apelio. Chooses not the Laura, because they're both special summon. That's probably why. Wait, were they? No, he could have targeted. Yeah, he could have targeted either one of these with Laura because they were already on the field. Ooh, did he mess up? Oh, shoot. I think he might have messed up. I think he might have messed up, guys. <clears throat> Next turn, he can use fusion effect. No misplay or yes misplay. That might have been a misplay. Malco, what's up? Yeah, that's, uh, I feel like that would have been a Laura into ulti, but maybe I missed something. Because right now, Ohaimi's about to take advantage of this and snack on it. He's going to go, nom, 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 nom. He's going to snack this up. His Harpy Lady's big old claw feet are going to take full advantage. You realize that the bigger the feet, the more powerful the monster? You guys notice that? Or is it just me? 
It's like tiny feet. Slightly bigger feet. Big old feet. <clears throat> He's thinking. Pondering his next play here. Do I update the scores? I don't even know. I wasn't paying attention. Let's see. 3-2. Three, 3-2. Two, three, two, two, two. Three, three. Two, two, three, three. We're good. Oh, he's on a second deck. Oh, uh, Jaime's on a second deck. Uh, that's what I didn't update. Feet. Yeah, it was fun when the meta was Fire Kings and Harpies because that was literally a foot lover's dream. You had Fire Kings feet and Harpy Claw feet. It was just feet, feet, feet. You good boy. Dan says he's getting cut up. He's going for something. It took him a very long ponder to decide on what it was gonna make. Makes the roach! He runs it! Roach is gonna get summoned! Most people dropped it, but that's probably why they played on Jaime into Ritual Beast. Even though we didn't see it last turn. Or last game, not turn. He's going to boost up to 23 and 19. So it's going to take out the Canahawk, who can now, if he so chooses to detach and float away... Right? What's in the banish pile? Make sure he did, the, did this correctly. Yeah, yeah, he can. Yeah, buddy. Black Snake be in this war. Deciding if you... I mean, I could see the reasoning here, because he could change as a target, right, and take out the Apelio if he so wants to, and then the Roach would take out uh, the Elder. So you'd be... All right, yeah, you'd be best not to, is kind of what I was thinking, too. Um, so there he goes. And, I mean, you have Roach, too, but it's only five or higher, so you would have been fine with that. So honestly, it, it was a gamble. So you either uh, swing in... Or you defuse, you get both monsters, and you lose monsters, and you end up with one monster on the field who happens to be just the window, who can float. Or you don't defuse, and he can't swing over your Apelio, and hopefully you have a Destiny Draw was triggered. We didn't see it last game, but he's going to use it this game. He's not going to forget to click the button. He's going to get exactly what he needs. Apelio is going to get Yeeting. Are we going to see a Lara here? No, we're going to see a set. That's what he destiny drew. And straight to the battle face, taking out the roach, biding his time. And Ohaimi is going to be left with no back row and a cyber slash lady. Most likely a ritual beast ambush was what he searched. And a feather rest off the top. No, nope, he already had it. Never mind. This is his top deck right here. Plus two, he needs some back row here if he's going to try and play around all of his. Oh, Jaime needs something good. What did he get? Is it worth it? Anything toppy? Anything worth it? Field spell was already in his hand. Unless it shuffled the hand and I didn't see it. Get Oracle in. <clears throat> That's going to trigger any ambush or back row. He's going to get to pop one. It's a money book. Book of money. Not prismatic, though, so it's not that much money. Flips him down. That's going to be the ambush, probably. That's probably the D-draw ambush that he did. It is, in fact, the D-draw ambush. He's going to bait it out. I mean, he's going to use it either way, so it's not like he's baiting it out too early, but he is probably baiting it out earlier than uh, Tsubusa wanted to use it. 
One, get 99,999 channel points. Two, get top score in a week in Fantasy League. Three, <laughs> that's a little weird. Three, boost the Team Wars Discord server. And four, Twitch Prime. Doesn't boosting count as... I just blew out my eardrum. One of my headphones just cracked. Oh, I broke my headphones. Well, I'm I'm deaf now. All right, well, I got one ear now that can only hear. That's fine. <clears throat> All right, we're not going to see much here other than the window uh, swinging into an Oracle who's boosted to 1,600. Somebody forgot, maybe? Hey, yeah, it's not looking so hot, but uh, Tsubusa does have a float here. Uh, he could float if he wanted to into stall mode. I mean, he kind of wouldn't really be able to do that with a Harpy Lady on the field. It's going to be very tough. Two Harpy Ladies now, even tougher. Hunting Ground's going to take out that back row. It's a floody. Floody good. Yeet the window. No more float for you. This is game. On board. Straight to the battle phase. One set from Ohimi and Ritual Beasts. You're going to get pushed off the table here. But Sabusa is still very much uh, playing. Oh, Jaime's repeat is going to pay off. He's going to take the dub away. And this time playing obviously very much differently than the first game. So Jaime's now 1-1. And Sabusa's still a solid 2-1 with two dubs from the Ritual Beasts themselves. What is he going to pick to push up against Oh, Jaime? He doesn't get to pick. It's literally he just goes to his second deck. So we're going to see what it is. Uh, what would you pair up with Ritual Beasts? Probably, I want to say this, but I'm going to wait. Okay, I was totally wrong. It, I was definitely going to say heroes, because that's what he picked. <laughs> I was not going to say heroes, but uh, Tsubusa does have heroes paired up with his ritual beasts. Duel. And it's going to be Ohaimi first here with the Chandler summon. That's already a good start. He just needs a set or two. Let's see if my wife read my text even. Ask him for coffee. She did. Rip. Uh, that is going to be a cyber slash harpaleta. Can we, like, are we surprised that the meta for harpy ladies has been so strong for so long? I'm trying to think when this box came out. It had to be. I gotta do some research. Duel. Ooh, spicy wind streaks. Was I featured in one? Oh, sorry, getting distracted. Uh, let's see. We got ourselves double set with an oracle on board, adding back the rest. So he's actually opening up a lot better than he had in the past. Last match, he didn't open this well. So this is already a better board for Ohaimi. Granted, his opponent's playing a different deck this time. So, MST searchable here for Tsubusa is going to at least take out one of those. If he so chooses to use it on one of those. Might not even do so. And there's the MST. He's going to get his clock tower. Did he hard draw that? He did. Oh, feels bad. You don't really want to hard draw your clock tower because then you don't have anything in the graveyard to utilize with popping your clock tower. So this is already not good. Uh, the fact that he hard drew it. Lightning Vortex says, what's up? And he's going to dump the Destiny Hero Celestial here. He has at least one target valid. And he's pondering here. Oh, Jaime could save with a book, but does he so even want to? Is it worth it? Do you save it for later? March 2021. 
Thank you for that research that I was trying to accomplish, but it couldn't. Thanks. So we're almost one year. One year will be next month for Harpies. Being in the meadow. And they didn't start on top, but they did work their way up to the top. Stayed there for a while. So it's not that they've been oppressive for a year. It's just that they've been relevant for a year. Which, for budget players, is freaking great. If you bought Harpies when it came out, you, you had a deck for a year. Just the same thing with Invoker. If you invested in Vocation and Invoker for a year, you were set for a year. Now, granted, that was two main boxes. Uh, but still. Harpies were meta since release. Yeah, but they weren't num tiered one since release. They floated. They've been up and down. They're not tier one now either. I don't think about it. They're still meta, though. He's going to choose to save the Oracle. And bounce here. He's already going to bounce if he was going to. Why wouldn't he? Okay. I mean, obviously, he's thought this out. It was a big pause. Flip the Oracle. Send back the Cyber? Or the... Uh, what's the name? Stratos? Mask of Change. Okay. That's going to be a forced mask change early. Blast gets summoned down to the field. I don't know if you really needed to mask change there, honestly. You could have just probably... No, he wants the... Yeah, he wants the... He wants him to die. Yeah, okay. I can see that. Can we talk about how dope he looks, though? Like, I honestly think Hero Blast looks pretty sweet. As far as heroes goes. It's pretty dope. Like, I, I like all their shit. Like, if I was still cosplaying, I would totally cosplay as this dude. It's probably not hard to make that, either. Uh, yep, I can make all of that. Except the spandex. Can't make that. Gotta buy that. Oh, no! Jaime! It's either he did really poorly, or... Blast is gonna just send it back to the hand. Love it. Not really. Or uh, um, he just didn't want to do anything because Clock Tower had four tokens this turn. There's no real point. And Blast's going to get rid of the other one. Oh, thank you, Swag Nice. Oh, Monster Reborn! Oh, bro, I totally am stealing your Harper Slash Lady, bro. It's mine now. Oh, man, yeah, you don't pop that tower anymore. That tower just stays. That tower just wastes its its, its four tokens. Or you're going to go for game. That works, too. Because you freaking had an MST in your hand again. Bro, that's insane. Uh, he's gonna have one valid target, so 32 to the face. One of these has to connect. We know he has no resistance, so there's no way he's not gonna connect. And Sabusa's gonna make this 4-3. Oh, Jaime gets shoved off the table. Going 1-2. and two. Losing to Ritual Beast and now Heroes. Sabusa, man, coming out and dubbing with, with Dex that are just uh, uh, right now beating Harpies, man. That's just hilarious. All right, we're gonna have 4-3 now. X-Factor for in the lead now. D-Fusion had tied it back up, and now X-Factor took the lead. <laughs> Bougians, let's go! Oh, man, when Bougians came out with their, not their uh, Pendulum support, I didn't, I didn't play them then, but when they came out with their other support, the tanky support, I played them, and that was probably some of the most fun I had playing in a month for, for some decent time. Then I got bored, and then I moved on. But it was fun for a month. They were basically Melodious before Melodious was Melodious with their hand trap to boost. doesn't do zero, but it does boost. Crane is basically score. Just not as good. But still, unexpected. Like the Spanish Inquisition. 
No one expects the Spanish Inquisition. As they decide what they're countering heroes with, Diffusion is going to take their time and ponder carefully. What is that emoji? Blush? Oh. There's a follower emote. Can we talk about how those aren't really working? Yawning. Oh, they are working. When you're on PC, the follower emotes work. But when you're on... Um, when you're on uh, mobile, they do not. All right, folks, we are going to see my hawk take the table. What is he playing? It's looking like it's going to be melodious. That's, that's what it's looking like. Oh, gosh. Swagnatus, what is that? I do not like that. That does not look cool. Solo. Get yeah, Solo one. He's got himself some, uh, some spicy mattage here. In the dynamic mat that is uh, Witchcrafters. Spicy Penny over there. Goes for a Songstress. Can we talk about how she's green? I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of her being green. Why are they all blind, too? I guess these aren't blind. Is it just Songstress that's blind? Probably. I haven't been paying that much attention. What an opener, Mozarta, and then into a Ma, uh, so Chopina, into a Soprano, into a Fusiano, maybe. Might not, he might not fuse. Nope, he's going for it. I know it's Jigglypuff, it just looks weird. Definitely looks creepy, not gonna lie. Drop it like it's hot, we got a... Choir in attack position usually indicates that, yo, I got a score in my hand. Swing if you dare, dummy. That's usually what that means. You don't put her in attack unless you're trying to get him to swing into her and score. Pun intended. Wife didn't bring me coffee. She's definitely mad at me, guys. All right. I already bought her flowers. What more could I do? Bun says, also in case of Corbett shuffle. Very true. Bloom because of Vortex, I guess. Yeah, we did see that earlier. Well, I mean, that's kind of the... It's it's kind of more or less your safer turn one play is to go into Bloom. And, uh, and, and really, no matter the matchup, really. The only time you wouldn't really go into a, a Bloom turn one would probably be against... I, honestly, I don't know. I'd probably make her against everything. I guess anything that banishes, you don't want to do that. Man got dread double mask in hand. <laughs> that, that would suck. That would really suck. He didn't even use his skill, so he definitely doesn't have a monster to discard to benefit. So he can't even do that. Hi, Buns, by the way. Buns is writing my uh, autobiography. It's called How Shows Betrayed Me. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. This looks like a free win. Uh, my Hawk might get that free win. And it's a Karma Cut. I literally said against Stuff That Banishes. And he's going to do it. And Dread was, in fact, in hand. 23 to the face. 300 life points is all he'll have left. Dread gets sent to the graveyard. That's probably why he didn't bother to utilize any of his skill stuff because uh, you just get an MST off it, really, and Dread's already in your hand, so you kind of lose. Rip Young Dread? Yep. There's the Vortex. Did he top deck that? No, he held on to it, waiting for his Karma Cut to deal with the Choir. Oh, wow. Rip Destiny Draw. Hello. Goodbye. Still no monsters. Not looking good. 300 life points. My Hawk just needs a set solo for bluff, and he wins. Unless that's like a Kanadi or something. It's a Necrofusion! Even better! That's, that's game. 
Unless that's a drowning. This build builds weird? No, Lightning Vortex makes sense. That used to be the early build for this deck. It was Lightning Vortex. People kind of shifted away from it because it kind of felt dead. Sorry, Jan's belt. Uh, it just felt like it was dead at times. You'd run like three of these. I know when I played the deck, I ran three, dropped it to two, and eventually I think I ended with one as I was climbing. Because it's just, it just can't, it just, you don't really use it as often as you think you would. Yeah, he's running a lot of discard stiff. Goes for the plume, broom, bloom, bloom, prima. I combined prima and bloom and made plume. These sleeves, though, oh, love them. Not sure why. Looks sweet. That's Soprano. Is that a treach? I don't know. Let's find out. No, Karma Cut. He did. Ouch. Well, it's Abusa. Well played, bud. You brought Ritual Beast. You gave us entertainment. No shame in that. You went. What'd you go? Two and three and two? Three and two. That's pretty freaking good. Nice job, bud. But Defusion Man just bringing this back up. They're just four and four now. They just keep going back and forth, which is a typical, usually I say a typical Night Fox and Shouse game. Where we're literally eight and nine, or nine and nine, nine and ten by the end of this. So even without Shouse, I guess it's just me. Maybe I'm just the cursed one. D Hero Worst Deck. Swagnitis agreeing with Hans Sounders there. I mean, it got him a win. Can't be that bad, right? He went one and one with it. It's a 50% win rate. It's about what you need in the case to pick up, right? Oh, God, I'm so tired. Sorry, guys. I didn't get caught. I didn't have time for co to make coffee this morning. I'd be totally better if I had coffee. Wife read my stuff and then didn't bring me coffee or make me coffee. It hurts. It hurts. Yeah, it's a good rate if you want to get top ten thousand. Yeah, that's pretty much what everybody wants, right? Man, some of these, some of the times watching the KC Cup people, it's like you played ten thousand games and you finished with a fifty-two or fifty-three percent win rate. Bro, you just wasted your weekend. Like, why? Why? You're not even top 100. Hey, is the only way to make Shao's cast take notes? Yeah. Prince Irving. Yeah. Vamps too true. Vamps would bring him... That's maybe... You know what? I was asking, uh, I was asking some peeps yesterday. It's like, how can I make Shao's jealous... And make him want to, you know, who could I bring as my casting partner? And I said, is it Ohaimi that would make him more jealous? Or Mango? And I forgot Mango's the vamp god. Uh, so it probably would be Mango. Honestly. Now that I think about it a little bit more. i got a little bit of time, you know, tucked away to think about it. It's definitely going to be Mango. Yeah. Yeah. Got to reach out. Sucks. So. Double Carly Vamp plus Hazy Pair. Yes, <laughs> Christy, you gonna be my co cast? Uh, I'm gonna allow that, Swag Nice. Because that's totes fine. You think that'll make him jealous? I don't know. I think more more mango than even her. Triple set from Sal here. No. Yes? Yes. We're already on turn two. Dang. That sucks. 30 card harpies is my guess here. Obvious. Kind of makes sense. Floodgate. One MST. Got to need two more. D hero is good if you open all the techs you need. Pretty much. Triple MST solo one time. <laughs> That's really all you need is uh, triple MST. Not even, it's not so, well, yeah, you could win with solo, but you could also win with uh, the fusion. Ast uh, Astianazar, 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 
Austin is auto. What the heck is the fusion? Fusion wins too. Triple MST in the fusion. <laughs> so pretend to have you do EPK. First movement solo. There it is, but no double MSTs in addition to it. So just open it, hon. Stop being doo doo. Yeah, buns. Everything looking good. My Hawks, so all clean decks. Everybody's at 4 4. Scores are 4 4. 3 4. Yup. Yeah. Checks out. Checks out. We're going to get a flip here with a book of money. Not going to allow him to use his skill. He went ahead and summoned the Diva. Oh, not all Diva. Sonata the Melodious Diva. So annoying. I wish the thingy came after. I think I wish it was Diva, the Melodious Sonata. That'd make more sense. Not really. That'd be terrible. And it's a Regeki break dumping? His only Harpy that does the Searchy Mix searches. And that's going to give him possible plays here. What's he going to add? Smart money is on. Yeah. Perfumer, because you don't know if you're going to top deck anything if you go Chandler. So Perfumer to the hand. That's a guaranteed... Harpe Leda. Perfumer gets summoned. Summoning Perfumer adds a Egotist to the hand. They love discard cards and everything. Yep. So this is, uh, that's going to be the Harpy Cyber Lady. That's going to be a Cyber Slash Lady. And is that going to be a set that we're going to see from So? He had tripled. That's, no, another Egotist for game. What? What just happened? No, 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 no. <laughs> what? Just like that, Sal from the back hoof comes and dubs over my hawk in his melodious Aladis. Holy moshi. That was what? What a top deck, bro. You top decked your egotist. And then you had your play for another egotist, and you just you just win. That's hilarious. That's pretty funny. What a sack indeed. Oh man, that's hilarious. All right, we looks like uh, our second deck is Gaia. Makes sense. Pretty strong opener here from my hawk. He's going to have the Gateway of Chaos. He's going to have the Galloping Gaia. He's going to add a Soldier Gaia, revealing a 5 Dragon. So he has pretty much full combo with a dodge possible set, maybe. Magical Knight gets summoned. Magical Knight from the hand, summoning the Dragon. So now he, my Hawk's got his Sack Hand, but he's going first. Could still be a Sack Hand. In defense. Nope, an attack. Okay. With one set, this is looking pretty solid for Sal here. I mean, it's not like, or sorry, for my Hawk here. It's not like Sal, as I was trying to say. Can't break this board. It's pretty easy with one set in the Gaia. Hunting Ground is the way to do it. Holy moly. That's how you do it. Chandler, get popping. Goes for the field spell. Obvious pick. Gaia, get popping maybe. Chain it. Maybe. He can't dodge it. Maybe. You gonna wait? Are you gonna wait? He's pondering. He's pondering. He could also pick off the hunting ground, honestly. He could also chain the guy at hunting ground and save his field spell. I was not coaching. Okay, he, he not coaching. Book of Moon Roll. Oh. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I forgot I had those sound effects. Now I'm overusing them. 
And books in chain to the book. So no harpy for you. Uh, I lose my field spell, but that's okay because I prevent you from getting a harpy lady, but you still have two cards. Are we looking at a possible double set from Sal? I missed the offering, Chandler. <laughs> set and face. Okay, one set. Well, we know what my Hawk's card in the hand is. It's his uh, Magical Knight, dude. So he actually could do a Soldier Guy. He actually could do a play here. Let's see if he does it. Let's see if he does the play that I'm thinking of before I start coaching. Coaching, coaching, coaching. I am not coaching. No, 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 no. He's pondering. Guy or a black luster top deck is GG. Well, not, not quite. Uh, well, actually, yeah, I guess quite. That route. Yeah. That route. Oh, hits the floodgate. All right, here we go. Gaia. He's going to do it. He's going full combo, combo, wombo, wombo, combo. Oh, baby, it's a triple. Reborn would be good, too. That'd be super good. Now, guy, the Force Knight's doing his thing. If you control no monsters or your opponent controls a monster with more than 20-something hundred attack, you can summon this normal summon. this call for their hands without trouble. So about it. Broken. Pop the field spell. The one time you want to click yes. Very seldomly do you ever click yes, but Curse of the Dragonfire, you would click yes. Pop the field spell in case you ripped any setties. He could get a boost here if he wants to. Does he have... No, he does not. Okay. So boost away. One pop. And just one card in the hand. No main fate. Bro. Bro. Since I've been playing Master Duel and going back and forth between the two, I forgot there's no main phase two a couple times in Duel Links, so I held on to my cards. And I'm like, oh, whoops, can't set those now. Rip. <laughs> uh, so bad. Or I do the opposite in Master Duel. I'll set everything, then go to battle phase, something gets popped, and I'm like, oh, wait, I could have waited till main phase two. All right, we have a Profumer. That's insane. That's how we swept them last time. Granted, it was a different deck. Gaia can pop here. He needs Dark Rebellion. Yep, gets popping. Takes care of the lowly Perfumer and straight pass. This is not good. He needs... Now, he's not dead dead. Uh, he doesn't have game. He needs another monster, and he's going to set here and go to battle. All right. He gets one more pop, but he will be down to zero attack. A set from Sal here. Will it be enough? Gaia could pop in the end of the main phase, or is he baiting him? Is this a bait? Straight to the end phase. MST was the set. He doesn't need to pop it. Oh, it's a karma. Bye bye, prismatic. Bye bye. That's giga game. Gaia beating out Sal's harpies. The reverse sack. It wasn't really a sack, but my he's gonna get revenge here. Wait, yeah, my hawk. That's what I said. My hawk wins. Yay! I mean, I'm not being biased or anything. I'm just saying, yay. That's gonna put defusion back in a tie. Game, this has been back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. It is insane how these guys just keep trading wins. We're going to basically see the entire roster of both teams at this rate. We got two players left from each team. Okay, so it's not like we're going to be missing out. We've had one repeat only used so far by Defusion. It did pay off. All right, they're already at the table. You asked, you shall receive. 
Whoever wanted water, behold, Sal is uh, delivering on your request. Gaia going first again here, and he opened up the gateway once more. Gateway to Chaos. Not the best deck. Yeah, well, if he top decks Diva with a couple MSTs, he could be. And a book, I guess. You need book two. He has all the pieces. Myhawk adding another Soldier Gaia. So he has everything he needs. Magical Knight, summon Dwagon. Dwagon, get fusing. Yeah, Water is going second. So that's already a disadvantage. They want to go first. No, 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 no. no sets this time in defense position. Protecting himself from when he's going to have to use this pop because he's going to need to if he's going to try and survive any further. That disruption is going to have to be used. What? It's a diva. This is true. Going second versus this is pretty good. We're going to get a pop. We are. Gaia says no. No, 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 no. Well, here, I can do this. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Targeting the heavy infantry. A hold here might indicate a Book of Moon, a Forbidden Lance, a Chalice, some quick play in the hand. It's a Book of Moon. Get flipping. He's going to save it. Skill activation. Penetration. Collaboration. Infestration. I'm trying to find words that keep rhyming. He's thinking. <laughs> that would work, Swag. <laughs> Dang, I ain't saying that out loud. Mm -mm. Mitigation? That could work. Could use mitigation. Relax, Swag. <laughs> Ooh, going for the Bahamut Shark play. Hmm. Okay. Knowing that in his hand he has the Soldier Gaia, so he could yeet the Soldier Gaia here. He could do a, pop, a jump off the field. He's going to pop the Galloping Gaia field spell card. Soldier Gaia, though, is going to allow him to keep playing um, if he could survive. And if he does pop... Uh, Black Ray Lancer cannot uh, swing over the Soldier Guy. There's a Soldier Guy. No swing for you. Oh man, so you are mad. Yeah, neither player setting anything. All monsters drawn. Ponder, ponder. Wander, wander. You guys hear my phone's kind of loud. Ponder, ponder, wander, wander. Yakiringi, what are we gonna do? Hey, 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 ponder, ponder, wander, wander, neither can dive. So you kind of have a mixed bag here, right? So you could go into your Gaia, and you could swing into Bahamut. You would get your boost, but then you open his field to being able to 
make another XYZ play. Swinging into Black, black Gray Lancer just removes his detachment. And you're kind of just stuck. Now, he, if he chooses to save him, then he can't make an additional XYZ play. He'll just suicide next turn, and then you take 23 to the face. So, it's... To me, I feel like you would just go into the Bahama and open the door for a possible follow-up play. And we're going to see Banishings. Oh, boy. He had the Black Luster Soldier Envoy of the beginning all along. He chose not to use it going first. Makes sense. That's a big boost. 52. That's a swing at a swing. Lancer's going to choose to save himself here. And pass. Four cards in the hand. He definitely has plays. Kind of sucks because Envoy is like a IQ you, I win type of card, but he couldn't really do much there. Book Diva again? Yeah, I mean, he didn't set anything, though. You would think he set the book unless he just drew it. So the, that's the only way I could see this playing out for him is Book Diva as long as he drew just drew the book. He's thinking either he has many plays or he has only a few plays and he's just trying to figure out how to how to properly uh, win or at least survive. Oh no. Special summoning the silent angler. It's a shark. What? Just drop some frames. Summoning the shark and the angler. The angler was a special summon. Yeah, he has to have both in the hand. And guy's gonna pop the buzzsaw sharky. And that's kind of rip. Sets a card, didn't have book. That was his top deck, I believe it was. Switches into defense, the silent, the ray. And it's not looking good. Looks like water might be a big ol' oof. No reborn, no nothing. The water's not best deck. No, it is not. Eccentric. Get popping on that lowly back row. It was an MST. Big rip. Sal's probably done for. He ain't dead dead, but he's pretty much done for. Actually, yeah. No. Oh, now he's... Is that game? 28, 6... That's game. 6, 8, 5... No, he's 200 off. 100 off. No, he's, he's lethal. 100 over. Oh, he's going to do that. That works, too. That, that, you can do that too. That's fine. That's also a play worth making. Could have done that too. Battle Boxer Veil one time. No, you can't play it in that deck. I'm kidding. Nope. Wrong button. <laughs> Mihawk wins. Sao is out of contention here his water is not gonna be strong enough to stop the dark magician on a dragon so defusion taking the lead here highhawk is now three and one six and five overall here in this match for defusion versus x-factor
So far, you guys have only missed, uh, well, really nothing. Nothing, nothing really. Uh, spicy decks that we saw was Ritual Beast. And that's it, right? Do we see something else that was weird? I mean, Destiny Hero, but I wouldn't call that weird. Hazy's incoming. Uh, Phantom Knights. Yes, that was the first opener. It was Rex Cruz on the Phantom Knights. And it was a big oof. Yeah, that's how that's how poorly it went. I forgot about it. It was a big oof. Another Phantom Knights. That'd be nice. Beast Snake. He was in chat earlier. Making comments, saying hi to all his adoring fans. He's going to step up to the table, put his deck down, unroll his mat, shake hands with his opponent, even though it's COVID, so he probably might bump elbows. And then they're going to draw, flip a coin, and draw some cards. In this not children's card game, totally an adult's card game. It's my hawk first again. Three games in a row. My Hawk has opened Gateway to Chaos. Three games in a row. Not one, not two, three. The man is APK in Gateway to Chaos. He has core APK as if this was core and he's on Cyber Dragons. Three Gateway to Chaos. If he wins this and it goes for game four with Gaia and rips another Gateway to Chaos... I'm going to call Malarkey, okay? That's just some some fascinating top decking or opening. Oh, it wasn't you? Who was on Phantom Knights? Oh, it was... Uh, it was Markham. Markham was on Phantom Knights. Sorry, Rex. My bad. Yeah, 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 yeah. My bad. My bad. My bad. Double set. Guy in defense. My Hawk opening stupid again. Uh, I'm thinking magnets, guys. This might be magnets. It's 24 cards. It's right around where magnets are. Would make sense. I mean, it's not heartbeats. Maybe they were saving it. Maybe they were saving it for uh, heartbeats, but they're going to bring it out now. So, B Snake on the Magnetas. He's going to summon Gamma. Gamma's going to summon Beta. Beta's going to get searching for the most likely Alpha. Play three Gateway plus Ritual. <laughs> true, 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 true. Adding to the hand. What are we adding? Alpha. All right, so they had to be confident in this matchup because usually you don't want to send magnets into Gaia because you can't shoot away your magnets in the battle phase. So you got to do it in the main phase. With triple set here from B-Snake, this is looking like it might be easily turnaroundable for X-Factors and B-Snake. Gaia's going to have many valid targets if he even chooses to pop. What a hand indeed. Alpha obviously is in his hand. He searched it. So Gaia's not... My Hawk and Gaia's not looking too hot right now. Galloping Gaia. The field spell is going to get... Trying to search. See if it resolves. And... No! MST says, not in my house. Matup Magumbe is going to come over and smack that field spell right to the graveyard. Going to go poof. He's going to go swinging. Switch to the battle. Where's the hazy flame? Not around yet, Cosmic. Not here. 
Book of Moon in the battle phase. No field spell. Doesn't have to worry about not having to activate in the battle phase. And Anne is going to save any pops from the Gaia. If he wants to, he can yeet now as well. Get rid of both of his magnets for deltas. And turn himself into... I'm not going to coach. Just, I'm, gonna stop. I'm not going to say anymore. It's not coaching. Yeah, it is 24 cards. <laughs> 24 cards always opens Gamma Beta 3 set. Funk is definitely coaching. <laughs> it's hard. It's hard. Like, when you're solo, I'm usually, like, find myself very much more in the sense of calling the coaches. If, like, I was with Shouse or anybody else, it's a little easier just to do some back and forth and uh, not do so much coaching. Because when you're by yourself, it's like, I feel like I gotta fill the empty vo space or the the silence with something, and it usually ends up being coaching. <laughs> not on purpose. I swear, I swear, I'm not. I'm not trying to make one team better or another. But he is doing what I said. He's gonna eat both for the deltas. Is his. Uh, own turn gonna be the same. How <laughs> I mean, yeah, he could, he could. But he's probably still in the, uh, in the uh, helping my team win role. Yeah, usually when you lose, though, you're not done. You usually stick around and help your team ponder. Yeah, he's probably doing that. He's probably coaching in voice chat. And so far, it looks like he's doing what I said he would do, except I didn't finish my sentence. He's going to make a Dire Wolf. Dire Wolf's going to get popping. Are we going to target a back row or are we going to target a forward row? We go for the back row. Back left. Always. Always pick back left. It's a treach. What? It wasn't even dead. He just didn't use it. I guess he was hoping he wouldn't pick it off. He had a, a one in three shot because he could have picked any of these three cards. And he was just begging for it not to be Tretch. And it ended up being the Tretch. So his gamble did not pay off. He could have Tretch there. And then it wouldn't, he would have just been susceptible. Actually, yeah, he's just dead. <laughs> he's dead. <laughs> he could have Tretched or not Tretched. He, still would have, he would have been in a very bad spot. If, if this is a book, he's fine. Oh, MST, not a book. Oh. All right, so he's going to need his... Alpha's going to obviously add um, Berserkion, and then if he has another monster, he... If it was Gamma, he could have won. Well, actually, Gamma wouldn't be enough. No. No, Gamma would not be enough. He's too small. Alpha's in the hand. Oh, shit. He milled an Alpha. It's game. It's game, game. That's game. That's game. He milled Alpha with the Deltas, so he didn't have to use the one in his hand, and that is going to be lethal. Oh, shit. He used the one on the field. Did he just goof? Oh, yes, soldier. It's true. Still, though, you have enough pops. Um, I missed something? Yeah, this was definitely winnable. Use the one in the grave. This would have taken care of soldier Gaia. 
and you would have had lethal. Uh, right? That's what was supposed to happen, right? But it don't matter. Uh, soldier sets Berserky on a defense. Yeah, true. In that point, he doesn't want to clog his board. That makes sense. All right, that's fair. Because then he wouldn't have been able to s to float with uh, with Berserkium. So Hawk's Gaia is gonna take a big old L. He went three and two. Nice job. Nice job. And we're at six and six. Yay! It's exactly what you expect from a war. This close, this tight, all three hours, full on display. Yeah, it's it's been back and forth this whole damn time. They literally are trading wins. It's like when one person gets ahead, they get behind. One person gets ahead, they get behind. One team gets ahead, they get behind. They're literally trading wars. So it's either Dish or Jono gonna be coming from defusion here. And maybe somebody will streak and we'll see a, like a 10-6 on either team here. Or we're just going to keep trading wins. Either or is fine. You put all your gems on defusion? I wonder how that went down. Can I even see how the poll went? Damn. You guys did 85% on defusion. 15% on X Factor. For a total bet of 131,000 gems. So if you are uh, pick defusion, you only get to win 20k gems split among seven people. If you voted for X Factor, you can get 111,000 gems split among seven people. So if you're voting for X Factor, that's the one. I mean, you're just going to get a big old payout. If they win. Damn. Damn. Everything on Jono. It's Harpies and it's Dish on Harpies. Mm -hmm. All right, so there you go. Both players, first time, or well, Black Snake just won, but they haven't lost yet, is what I'm trying to say. Fresh on the board is Dish with a busted Harpy hand, more or less. He's going to egg Egotist here early. No Oracle, or he does have the Oracle in the hand to add back the Egotist. About to find out. And he's going to make a Harpy Lady. That's a rest. Sends back three. Adds two. 21 card Harpies. Yeah, that would make it more consistent for sure. One set. Two set. Pass. Hmm. Fascinating. I guess he wanted to leave his Chandler on board here. Usually too small. Magnets usually are too small to swing over a Chandler. The only one that could kill him would be the Beta or the Alpha, not so much the Gamma. But usually if you summon the Gamma, you have the Beta or the Alpha. Usually. The double set might be enough, though, for Dish here. MST turns the double set into a single set. Oh, Rex. And there's your Gamma. Gamma Summon. Brr, where's my drum roll? Oh, it's on the next page. Ooh, Delta. Ew. Eh, still better than nothing. Dish. 
Dumping an alpha, setting a card. Are we swinging? Still in the main? There it is, battle phase. Okay. Canadia is going to save the Chandler by... F okay, never mind. He's going to kill it. Yes, he is. Okay, good. I was going to say... Saves the Chandler, sending back the Delta, flipping down the Gamma so he cannot float into something else. And Mill, another card. That back row set, most likely a rebirth. He's going to trigger Chandler's ability here, sending back the Harpist, which is going to allow him to get a uh, Harpy Lady to the hand. Perfumer is going to get searching. Is it the field spell? It is. On the activation of the field spell, he could send back the Gamma, but does he want to give him the Gamma back and literally make the same play, which would be Gamma Delta? Or does he want to deal with them? Looks like he might want to deal with him. Doesn't want to give him too many card advantages here, and sending it back would allow him to mill and reduce his deck. Set up his board for the proper OTK. Thinking. Goes into... Now he could go into... Okay, goes into Harpy Lady for the Synchro. Pop in the back row. Back row chain, yes or no? We're going to see a chain. We are, but it's a book on the newly summoned Harpy Lady. So he's not going to be able to get too much damage here. Clearly doesn't want to give him D-Draw either way. Sets a card, so that's pretty good. He has some some sort of counterplay here. Harpist is going to add to the hand. E most likely... Honestly, probably an Oracle. No, it goes for Chandler. So I'd say Oracle just because... You already kind of blew all your load searches. So... These two, and then your field spell. So you're kind of out of searches. Kind of want to recycle those, so maybe go Oracle. And Magnet Warrior Beta making his way to the board to add the Gamma. No Alpha yet. It's in the grave. So he does have all of them. Goes to battle. No back row. Oh, no. No back row. Or did he think there was a main phase two like I do sometimes now? Flipping him down. Harpy Lady's not even going to let that stay on the board. She's going to say, get out of here. With no back row set, you pose no threat to me. Kite Roid is a possible option here. So if he's going to go for a game, he might want to do so in a manner that will allow him to poke first to test out the waters. He may have purposely, Black Snake may have purposely not set here because he didn't want to play into Harpy's Hunting Ground. And it doesn't look like it, that's the case because it's just going to be a clear sweep. Figured out exactly how to do it in a manner that would cause him to swing to feel out for a Kite Roid. And Dish is going to beat Black Snake's Magnets. Pretty much making it look really easy. With his 21 card Harpies. And that gives Defusion the lead once more. What is Black Snake's second deck? Is it going to be enough to give him the tie once more? I'm a yawn factory today. Shit, it's early. Doesn't help I didn't have coffee. Oof. Shit, I just woke up at 7.30, made coffee, and brought my ass down here to set up. Dish going first, and not as strong so far of an opener as he had last time. But it's all going to depend on how many back row sets we're going to see from him. Looks like Black Snake's on 20 cards. Gaia? I mean, we saw Buster Blader. That's the other thing that we saw was Buster Blader. We saw 
Phantom Knights, Buster Blader, and Ritual Beasts. Spiciness. It is Gaia. Force Knight, that's usually an indication that you have everything you need. And I'm wrong. Doesn't have shit. Double set. Pass. Dish with two back row. Might have been too intimidating for uh, Black Snake to actually even try to make a play here uh, just to get cucked. So he's not going to do anything except set pass. We're going to see. Oh, Harpy Lady won with an additional set. This is a swing for game. He's going to need a Book of Moon and he's going to get it. Gets flipped down. One set still from Black Snake. A triple set's going to be tough for Gaia, though. My wife finally brought me coffee for those of you waiting for that very vicious update. We are 7 and 6. Been live for 2 hours and I finally got a cup of joe. Mm. Oh, it's so good. It's actually a latte. We're, we're bougie like that. We got some espresso maker. Shows. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna do this, aren't we? Huh? Uh huh. I'm sorry, babe. Says Shows. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Late is better. Latte is better. Late's also better than never. Shows, oh Shows, how you have come. You have missed quite the back and forth war, bud. I don't think it's a Shows Night Fox three hour stream. I think it's a Night Fox three hour stream. I think I'm the cursed one. For it is seven six. They have literally been trading wins, bud. I should tell him. Uh, Shows, uh, the chat, and I came up with what I should tell you, and that is, um, vampires suck. Something 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 something. That was it. That's all we came up with. So we're going to see a Canadia. Lots of Canadia has been being played in Harpies. Vampires do suck. Dang it. Oh, they do give the good suck. Monster Reborn is going to grab the OG Harpy Lady from the graveyard here. What? Getting a boost, I guess. From this one. And we're swinging. I don't know if that's the best use of Monster Reborn, but it's uh, going to force the Kanadia here. Taking out the OG Harpy Lady. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. She got a stick of dynamite? No, that's her whip. And we're going to see another delay there. That's the hold from Black Snake. Whatever that back row is, it was live and activatable. Maybe a chalice? Maybe? All right, we're going to take out the Harpy Lady, and he's left with just Harpy Lady 1. Get swinging. OG Harpy Lady to the battle face. Dish draws a card and can't do squat diddly dip. Book of Moon is going to save his dragon. He says, no, I want my Gaia, and Dish... Is gonna scoop, not even waiting for a possible DC. That is gonna tie it up again. I was literally saying these guys are trading wins and they continue to trade wins. Dish is gonna move to his second deck, whatever that might be. And we are seven and seven again. I'll let you come in here now if you want, Shouse. But you gotta apologize. There's a hair in my coffee. That's fine. 
got to tell everybody how sorry you are. You'll never do it again. Something, something, something. Shows, Night Fox, Ben Affleck, J Lo. This might be a mirror. We'll see the card count and then we'll decide. Ooh, definitely a mirror. Gaia again from Black Snake. But Black Snake was not the one that opened APK Gaia or Gateway to Chaos APK. So I said Gaia again from Black Snake. I meant to say Gateway to Chaos again from Black Snake. But uh, he wasn't the APK with the. My Hawk had the APK. Maybe. Okay. Well, the offer stands, bud. It's, it's there. We're going to see full combo. How many sets, though? That's the question. It's going to be determined on the sets. Will Black Snake have enough sets to make sure he can disrupt Dish? And will Dish have enough MSTs to make sure he won't get disrupted? Well, it basically needs an MST in a book. Or two MSTs in a book. He's going to need two MSTs, one book, and his full combo in five cards. It, I mean, it's doable. It's definitely doable. Realistic? Probably not. Doable? Yes. Funny though, uh, Black Snake has blue eye sleeves and Dish has Dark Magician sleeves. So it's kind of cool. He's going to MST the book here. That's a good pop. Activates his own gateway to chaos. Wife put a trance spell hair in your coffee to get Shouse to never leave your casting side again. <laughs> ah. If only, if only. I actually did, I'd tell her that. I'm like, Shouse stood me up. <laughs> she was like, oh, no, I'm sorry. She was very sympathetic. Deciding. So he needs another MST or in another book here. If that back row is live, that is. Treacherous Trap Hole is an option, though we haven't seen it from any of the guys that have played today. Either they haven't drawn it, or did everybody drop it? I don't know why you would. It's such a good card. Curse of the Dragonfire is going to deal with the Galloping Gaia. He didn't even need his own Galloping Gaia. He's just going to go ahead and summon his own Gaia. And Gaia the Magical Knight of Dragons from Black Snake here is going to chain... Popping the guy of Magical Knight. This is going to be tough because they're both guys. And sh nothing. No response from Dish. So that means there's no Book of Moon. We're going to see a set. And straight to the end phase. Okay. Doesn't give him the field spell. Black Snake has a zero attack Gaia with one set and one card in hand. Is he going to have anything that he needs to f basically do follow up? No, straight to the end phase. Oof, big bad. But if Dish doesn't rip into a monster of his own or something else, he himself will just be passing. And so far it's a set. And maybe a pass. He's, sw he's switching to attack, but he's too small. What are you doing? Goes to the end phase, by s but switches him to attack position. Maybe because his defense is 1,500 and his attack's 2,000. He feels the need to switch there. But he's going to go ahead and do that. If Black Snake rips a book of his own, though, he could just flip his own Gaia down. But no, he's not drawing anything. If you control no monsters or if your opponent, uh, blah, opponent controls a monster with 2300 attack, you could summon the guy without tributing, but it looks like he's not summoning any guys, meaning he's not ripping any guys. Monster Reborn! Oh, but there's no fusions in the grave. Usually you want to target... Oh, I forget that they don't want you look at the stupid list. Ugh, such a dumb change, Konami. It's an old one, too. I just haven't had the... Uh, I don't think I have had the option this season to where I wanted to look at the grave and the activation. But Monster Reborn! 
most likely going to grab his own Gaia or his opponent's Gaia would, would be fine too. He's going to, yep. He's going to grab uh, Black Snake's Gaia here. Going to grab it. Shake it all around. Make it. Is he going to make a fusion of his own? You could argue no. You can honestly make an argument for no. Uh, by keeping your his Gaia, you're preventing him from making a Black Luster Soldier. Because there's no light in the graveyard. And Gaia's a wind. But if you don't, then okay, he's going to go for battle. But if you do fuse, then you lose the ability to pop. But your double sets is what you're going to be relying on. So this is just going to be swing, swing, swing. Preventing the Black Luster Soldier from Black Snake here. But giving him an open field for his own follow-ups. His dragon is still in the grave. Is he going to top deck what he needs to try and make a comeback here? But he's going to need a lot given... Okay, he's going to get an eccentric. So he could deal with some of the back row. He already had that card. He wasn't planning on using it until he had a play, looks like. So it looks like he finally got a play. And there's the treacherous trap hole I was talking about. We see it. It's prismatic. He's going to summon his Gaia and get comboing. Does he have a stop? Does Dish have a way to stop this? There's the dragon. Are we going to get a fusion here? Dragonfire taking out the gateway. He's going to need a book. Might be regretting not fusing now. Because if he had fused, he would have had a pop as well. But that being said, there was also a back set. So he could have fused and gotten booked straight away. So it would have unfortunately led to the same issue. So Dish needs a book here. He needs something. What does he have, if anything at all? He's going to let this resolve. He's going to let the fusion go through. He can book the guy here because there is no field spell. The Galloping Guy can get stopped here. Or sorry, the Guy of the Magical Knight can get stopped here. No problem, because in the battle phase, there's no field spell. So you don't have to worry about it. If he goes to pop, you can flip him down then and there. He won't get a pop off. We're going to see battle phase flip. This is very intense. It's another tied game trying to break the tie in someone's favor. He's going for the pop. If he gets flipped, he doesn't get the pop. Dish is thinking. Priority has changed. Does Dish want to stop this? Is it worth it? Does Snake want you to do this? Does he have a monster reborn of his own? Not that it really would change much. Actually, it would. Yeah. Book! He's going for it. Flipping down the Magical Knight of Dragons here. Trying to save Gaia the Magical Knight, which isn't even his own monster. It's originally Black Snake's Gaia. Goes to the battle phase. And ends his turn. Now Dish has priority here. Whatever that back row is, do you fuse your own Gaia? Play into the back row. Or he's going for it. He's going for the fusion. Did he rip his galloping dude? The other one. The, the, the other guy. So that he could dodge stuff. He's going for the fusion here. He has no time to waste. He needs this for the push here. In defense. Whoa. So he definitely has it in his hand. Okay. Goes for the pop. It's a Book of Moon working out like a charm in the hand. Are we going to see the quick play? No. No, we are not. But we're going to see a BLS for game. What? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Just like that. Well, it's not over yet. Wrong button. Dish is going to take the mirror and beat Black Snake. With his own monsters. 
And that's going to give Defusion the lead once again. Black Snake moves off the table. They are down to their final player. Press late. I capitalize that P. It looks weird if it's lowercase. Prosley, it is up to you, bud. Are you going to be the savior of X Factor's chance to go two and one? Or will you be the reason? Well, you're not the reason, but will you be the one that causes Defusion to go ten? Well, just win. Maybe they'll be they'll be three and zero. Oh. Lots on the line here. Their anchor being Presley is going to be a lot of pressure here, but these teams are not one to blink in the eye of pressure. I mean, they've already paid their fees. They're here to compete. They want that thick $5,000 prize pool. They're not going to be giving free wins. He's deciding, I guess, on which deck to send. He does have two, so he does get to pick which one does he want to play first. Will he cause a repeat? Does he want to play that for the repeat? Does he want to switch to a second deck? Feel out the water, maybe get a free dub. What are the chances? What do you like? What's your last two decks? If I had to pick, I would say their last two decks are probably uh, another magnet deck. And maybe another Melodious deck. Maybe. Now we could see what uh, last week. Let's see. Did Presley play last week? Let's find out. He did not. But they did bring a Fire Kings in week two. So maybe they have another Fire King this week. They brought actually two Fire Kings and a TG. Oh, boy. Oh, boy, guys. We're in for a treat. We are in for a treat. Would you look at that? Ladies and gentlemen, we got, we got ourselves some PKs. Phantom Knights. We started off the war with Phantom Knights. We might end the war with Phantom Knights. Parsley from X Factor, bring in the Phantom Knights. Guy going first, no combo? Yes, combo. Two sets, Guy the Magical Knight. This is not looking good. Oh, boy. Oh, no. Not a board. His name is Parsley also. Thanks for streaming, by the way. You're welcome. Am I saying it wrong? Oh, well, I got that directly from... You know what? That's my fault. I'm just going to say it's my fault. It's nobody else's fault. That's my own. Parsley, thank you for the correction. Well, not smug, thank you for the correction. Sorry, Parsley. All right, we're going to see Guy in defense and double set. Did I give Tsubu three? How did that happen? Oh, yeah, that's correct. Yeah, that's correct. Eight, two, four, six, seven, two, five, six, seven, eight. All right. Scores are good. Are the decks good? Dish is on a second deck. And Parsley is on his first. Not what you want to see here. A lot of thinking from X Factor's Parsley here. Is Phantom Knights good enough to beat Gaia? I can say they are because I have beat Gaia with my Phantom Knight deck. Self promotion. Just cogged with them myself, so I am quite uh, happy to see that they are being played because I am not a complete goober and I actually know how the deck works. Is he going to open what he needs to beat this Gaia? I don't know. It's going to be a tough board to break with double set and a Gaia. Using up his normal summon early here, that's going to get a book on the gloves. Cannot special summon. He's going to need a lot of back row here. Didn't rip any of his back row removal, so that's already bad. Or maybe saving it for the follow-up, if he can make it that far. So that's already pretty devastating. So Gloves, if you don't know what he does, uh, can boost by a thousand. Enemy controller! You could reduce him to zero right now and save yourself 26 to the face by popping the enemy controller. But then, even if he ends his turn, now you're at zero. 
Oh, this is a tough. You definitely, I, I mean, I'm not coaching, but oof. I know what I would do right now. Let's just say that. He is going to chain. That's exactly what I would do because if you did not, your opponent would use it on you. And you would get your field spell or your other back row popped. Yes, you have a zero attack monster, but that's not that big of a deal. He's going to banish uh, the Ragged Gloves, and he's going to send to the graveyard the Phantom Knight of Fragile Armor, who's then going to banish himself, discard one of the swords, and add or draw a card. Actually never played him, so it's actually interesting to see that he's being played. Uh, if you control is destroyed by battle or card effect, you can special summon this card from your hand. You can banish this card from the graveyard and send one Phantom Knight card from your hand to the graveyard. Draw one card. You can only use each effect of Phantom Knight Fragile Armor once per turn. So hopefully his top deck that he got off that is going to be enough to survive. But with a zero attack Gaia, if he doesn't rip anything to make more Gaias, he's in a good spot. Cosmic Cyclone on the field spell. So he did have a back row removal. He just chose not to use it. Phantom Strategy is going to send out Boots. Boots is going to banish. Boots is going to allow him to search for a trap or a spell Phantom Knight card. Adding the Night Fog Blade. Night Fog Blade to the hand is going to allow him to activate and negate a monster effect if he so chooses to. That is exactly what he's going to do. Set the one card and the one card he drew is going to hold on to the hand. Draw a card here. Doesn't matter. Field spell is gone. Can't search anything. Zero attack guy is not going to make a difference. The only thing that can save him here is if he has... The soldier guy in hand. His opponent has no monsters. Book of Moon on his own monster. Oh, boy. Well, so much for zero attack. Can you guys tell I got my espresso? Flips up the Gaia. Oh, free damage here. Just needs 400 additional damage. And a monster reborn will provide that. The Fog Knight Blade is set, though, so he can negate... A monster effect also not allowing that monster from attacking. You would chain it. There's no reason why you wouldn't. Chain it. Chain it. There it is. Okay. That's going to negate the Guy of the Magical Knight's effect and also not allow him to attack. Guy of the Magical Knight is going to get special summoned here. But he's going to get... Uh, Curse of the Dragonfire, that's going to be another fusion. So he's basically in a similar board state here. He's still going to be down to 400 life points. Two books in the grave, Cosmic Cyclone, Phantom Knight Sword. If you banish this card, you can special summon a Phantom Knight from the grave to the field. Swing it in for 26. That needs to be a Phantom Knight. And, well, honestly, he, he's kind of hosed if he doesn't have double Phantom Knight in the hand. He just kind of loses. With only one Fog Blade, we don't have any more Fog Blades in the game. We just get one from the skill. Uh, you you kind of host. You basically need this card at three. So whenever this card drops, I wouldn't be surprised if Konami makes it a UR in a main box. No, it's a double set pass. If he's running Treacherous Trap Hole, it will be dead since he has the Phantom Knight Sword in the grave. It's not quite over, but it's, it's pretty much over. Maybe you wanted to put him to zero? Maybe. Bops the Cosmic Cyclone. Banish to summon the BLS. That's game. Nothing you can do about it. Switches to D. Start swinging. Dish is going to bring D Fusion to nine and seven on game point. If he swings. Actually, it's not over. Never mind. I lied. He's going to wait. He's actually going to banish it. Okay. So I was going to... I didn't want to say anything, but yes. He's going to choose to banish because... Oh, it's... Okay. It's game. Going to make the Black Armor Dragon. That's game. BLS can't attack. Black Armor Dragon can attack. The, the play he... What he played around was the trap in the grave. The sword... If he swung in, right, he gets another swing with BLS. Well, the trap card in the graveyard can chain and resummon the gloves onto the field, preventing lethal play. But Dish is going to play around that by banishing the monster and winning. I didn't want to be considered coaching, so I kept my mouth shut and played dumb. But that's exactly how you would play around that. Nice job, Dish. 
Parsley is going to take a big L with Phantom Knights. I highly doubt they will repeat that. Don't know why they would. Maybe his other deck is something even worse. Not sure what's worse than Phantom Knights. But, uh, yeah. Maybe Fire Kings? <laughs> I feel like Fire Kings would benefit from that, but hey, whatever. So we're going to see uh, one point away for Defusion here. It's going to be a 9 and 7. We're already at a 2 hour 25 war, so not quite 3. David Magri said, to be fair, repeating here would be correct. Unless second deck is Mirror or Magnets. David Magri is a prominent, well-known community member, so I would uh, not want to argue with him. I would say he knows his shit. But it does not look like they're going to repeat. He's going to go into what looks like a Harpy deck. And he's for Gaia again. Dish first once more. And he's got the field spell. And he's got the search. He didn't even have to search for it. He hard drew the field spell. Another stupid opener from Dish here. That's insane. Gaia. In attack this time. Not going to waste any time. Looks like 30 card harpies. Only one set though. So Parsley's going to need a pretty solid harpy opener here. And his 30 cards is going to have to find a way to win if he wants to fight. A fighting chance at this. Big balls dish. <laughs> I mean, I could kind of see it. I, I can kind of see it. If you switch them to defense, it chooses not to pop. Harpy's not going to swing in if it's just a harpy with no no spell cards to send back to the hand. But, I mean, usually you'd end up popping before you get to that point because the only time you would do that is if you have super good hindsight and you know your opponent doesn't have anything more than a harpy lady with no back rows or spell card activations. Perfumer. So he has at least a card to start a play. Parsley does. So the question is, will Dish let him finish a play? Dish clutching the war. He is doing very well. Elegant Egotist gets activated here. He's going to let this go through. Just on the off chance there are two Egotists, I guess, in the hand. Very rare. Oh, no, he was saving his Tretch. That's what it was. Treacherous Trap Hole says... What? And kills just like... Not even a set back row from Parsley here. Oh, boy. This ain't good. The big balls from Dish paying off, but Dish himself doesn't have any sets or any other monsters to play to finish off Parsley, giving him a chance to come back here. Harpies could do it. It is possible. It is not over. Or is it? Did he brick into another brick? Chandler. Okay. Does he have a harpy to discard for it? Will Dish even let him discard anything? How do you not have any back row in a 30 card deck with four or five cards in your hand? He's thinking Dish most likely is the one on hold here. Do I pop? Do I not? Do I pop or do I not? Once you pop, you just can't stop. There it goes. Chandler, get popping. And a Book of Moon. He's going to say nope. Oh. Nope. There it is. Chandler's going to get channeling. Discarding a Harpist. Did he know he... Like, this is insane. Like, this could have been his turn one play. What was he missing? What piece was he missing to make this play? So he's actually running double Egotist. So you don't have to worry about a Tretch here. Summoning the Cyber Slash Harpy Lady spell card. This is game. Egotist for game. Harpy Lady get bouncing in just like that. Without Dish having any additional monsters on the board, he's not going to be able to do anything. And turn Parsley turning this around with his 30-card Harpy swinging in for pure lethal. Dish is out. Defusion not able to close. 
and X Factor staying alive. They are given a chance here. Will Harpy Lady carry them for a reverse sweep, or will their fate be sealed in whatever Jono is playing? Will Jono close this war out with his next appearance to the board? Or is Parsley going to bring us to a 9-9 game for point? Holy moly. For those of you just joining us, this war has been a complete back and forth. We just for the first time saw Defusion pull away by more than one point. X-Factor was in the lead early, pulling away by only one point. It was always either a tie game or a one-point game in either Defusion or X-Factor's favor. Defusion was the first one to take a two-point lead over X-Factor and kept it for however long uh, we'll see. It's either going to close it out on a two-point lead or they're going to go into a 9-9 match game point with a possible reverse sweep from X-Factor. Jono is going to come to the table here. With a harpy of his own, most likely. We saw Buster Blader early on. We saw Phantom Knights not once, but twice. We also saw Ritual Beasts in this war. It has been a spicy one. We also saw your generics, which were Magnets and Gaia and Harpies. And one Melodious. So it's not been a complete wash. We've only had one repeat from Defusion. That was Ohaimi. Choosing to repeat his Harpies with the Harpies. That ultimately ended him at 1-2. His repeat did pay off, though. He was able to beat... Uh, oh, we also saw Water XYZs. That one flopped like a dead fish. So Jono on the bottom with his own Harpies and actually has a Swallow's Nest. So that's going to reveal a lot of information there. Dumping an Egotist and a... Well, using Egotist... So both of his limit two cards in the grave, you don't have to worry about a Tretch, is going to make Heraldry of the Patriarch in attack position, not in defense, in attack, adding the Egotist back to the hand for possible follow-ups. What does Parsley have? Well, he just needs a book, honestly. He just literally just needs a book. Now, Jono is in a 20 card. Two, four, five, six, seven. Yep, Jono just has 20 cards. Parsley on the 30 card Harpies. We're about to see which one is better. Jono making a rank four here would consider himself more consistent so far. But does Parsley's 30 card drag out brawl deck have more uh, what it needs to uh, close out this war? Or at least tie it back up. Ooh. Oh no, MST is going to take out Parsley's only backer, which was a hysteric sign for Bluff. He's just going to need to survive this turn, and he might have game. Could he do it? It is possible with only a Patriarch on the field. He would have the opportunity to uh, win here, but if Jono summons a Harpy, uses Egotist, he could have enough for lethal, depending on the defense of the monster that he set. Most Harpies have pretty minimal defense. The highest, I believe, is only 1,400. So you don't have to worry about more than that. So you just need something with more than 1,400. There's the Egotist. This will, if he summons Harpy Lady 1, will boost. Nope, goes for 2. Or regular Cyber Harpy. Uh, oh, Spider for game. Oh, no. Nope, Cyber Slash Harpy Lady. Okay, that works too, I guess. Monster Reborn. And that's a Cyber Harpy Lady. He's not going to give him any chance here. That's why he didn't go for Spider for game because he had the Reborn in hand. That is going to be game. Looks like Jono will close this out for Defusion if these connect. Swing, connect. Swing. And it connects. <laughs> Jono winning this war for Defusion. 10 to 8. What a final four match sprint we had. Holy moly. That was insane. Nice job. GG's all around. Everybody did great. X Factor and Defusion here.
closing out their week three with a 10-8 to eight in Defusion's favor. We saw Buster Blader, Ritual Beast, Phantom Knights, and wa I'm going to say Water X was in that category just because, you know, it was different. And then the usual suspects. What a freaking match. Uh, best standouts were uh, Sabusa and Dish, both 3-2. Everybody, and Mihawk, also 3-2. Everybody else going 2-2, two, 2-1, two, two, or 1-2. So no real sweepers, but enough sweepers on Defusion there to bring them another dub, making him undefeated after week three. Going into week four... Uh, with three wins, and looks like uh, Jono's going to jump in here. Dude, am I saying your name right? Please correct yes. me. Yes. Is it Jono or Wano? Please tell no, me. No, it's Jono. Okay. Jay sounds like Jay. Got it. Thank like you. Like English Jay. Congratulations, Jono. You guys won. Now you're 3-0. and oh. What do you have to say about that war? Any surprises, and how stoked are you right now? Okay. We, we are trying to win also. Winning is normal. I'm never happy. I'm always or normal or angry. Fair. Uh, Fair. But about the game, it was a bit surprised. These guys usually brought Fire Kings to counter RPs and they didn't this week. Mm -hmm. So it was okay because um, we never overcommit to stuff like this. Um, so like our lineup was pretty much the same. If you look at the report, you see the usual decks. We just tweaked some stuff, you know, add a dweller here that maybe you usually don't bring. Some stuff like that. It's also funny that they rocked the PKs. It was mildly expected because if there is one team that usually hops on the new decks early, it's X Factors. So we always had that on the back of our mind. They did bring two. They did not perform very well. No, they did not. I think they also did not get the best matchups because was was in the starter against mm -hmm. Gaia. Then yeah. the other was also against Gaia. Yeah, they they played into the Gaia other. though. So they played that into Gaia. PKs into Gaia. So that's a little little sus. Yeah. Well, it is what it is. Well, congratulations, Jono. Uh, did you have any sweats going in there for the closer? Because you were. Literally, it was just you for game, set, and match. Do you mind sharing what your other deck was? What did you not pick? Because you, you obviously uh, chose your 20-card Harpies. You don't have to say, but but I guess you could I, say, why would you pick 20-card Harpies? Well, because the other, the other one was not better. <laughs> so the other well, one was not better. I, I usually bring heroes. I think I brought heroes the last weeks. Harpies, heroes. This week, I did not bring the heroes because of the Fire Kings. Because I was afraid... I might get uh, LMAO'd by Fire Kings, like I start with uh, Harpies and then they counter that with Fire Kings and then I have the hero and hero does not too much against the Fire Kings, Arvati is super annoying just by itself. Mm -hmm. So this week I swapped to Magnet, which has similar matchups, you know, the, the point is to counter Gaia mm -hmm. and both two. So Yeah, and you went with against, 20 uh, cards too. What? And you're, you had, you decided to go for a 20 card Harpy build as well. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah, I've played both this season. This week, I, I think it was better to cover what I needed it to. Yeah, I think twenty was a good choice there because it added a lot more consistency. So going first, you obviously opened well enough to make Harpy, or in the final match, obviously the uh, Patriarch, and at least one to two sets. That that worked out really well for you guys. So you excited, obviously, going into week four. Uh, yes. Uh, I don't even know we play week four. Yeah, I didn't look think. either. Let's see, week four. Michizuri United. Oh, my friend Armigona. It's gonna be fun. I hope to destroy them, oh, as usual. Course. Yes. Who who wouldn't want to destroy their opponents in all the matches? Well, you guys did a phenomenal job. Do you have anything else you want to talk about that I didn't ask about? Man, I want to thank my teammates. This would not be possible without my teammates. They are the best. Uh, I want to thank... Uh, the, the, the staff the staff does not get enough recognition the referees and the streamers mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm, I feel big you. thank you to them and just say good luck to X Factors they are a good team uh, our first finals was versus them so we got some mystery I hope to face them again in the playoffs I know they can do it and that's it 
Nice job. Well, thank you, Jono, for jumping in here, bud. Good luck with uh, for you guys in Diffusion next week. Appreciate you guys stopping. Uh, appreciate you stopping in here to clarify and do some quick interview for us. As always, guys, thank you for watching Team Wars Week Three, Diffusion versus X Factor for a final score of ten eight in favor of Diffusion with Jono as the anchor, closing it out with his twenty card harpies. As always, guys, thank you guys for watching. Hope. To see you guys next time, I was Nightfox15, self-promo, check me out, YouTube and Twitch by the same name. Uh, somebody's going to get raided, not sure who, ready to host whenever you are off, Nightfox, thank you, Team Wars. I am ready now, sign off is done. Nice job, Diffusion, congratulations, and GG's all around. Deuce! Thank you for casting. You're welcome.